Hello again, friends. My name is Miss Toy, and today I'm going to be doing another activity with you having to do with the wind. Now, we've already learned about the wind out in nature, out in the real world, how it can be from a soft breeze to a strong gust of wind that's, that's forceful enough to knock down trees and be very dangerous. We've also learned that a blow dryer with its power of electricity can also make wind that's powerful enough to blow certain objects. Now we're gonna talk about the wind that we can make with our own bodies, with the power of our breath, by just blowing like this. And we're gonna think about and experiment with the things that our breath is powerful enough to move and not powerful enough to move. So let's start with these two objects I have here. All right, so here I have an envelope, a cute little envelope and an eraser. First, I'm gonna try blowing on the envelope to see if my breath is strong enough to move this envelope. So let's see. Whoa, that was super easy. I only had to use a little bit of force. Let's see again. And it moved so far way out of the screen. That's because this envelope is made of paper. So it's very light. So I don't actually need a strong blow from my breath to make it move. Now, let's try the eraser. It looks smaller than the envelope, so maybe we can guess that it'll be easier to blow on. Let's see. Wow, this is hard. Oh. Wow. See, so I was blowing as hard as I could but the eraser only moved a little. Instead of flying away like the envelope did, it only just moved a tiny bit and then dropped, and then I couldn't move it anymore. So we can think of that because, we can think of that in comparison to the envelope. The envelope looks bigger, right? But it moved much easier because the material is so much lighter. So this is made of paper, but the eraser is made out of a more heavy rubber material. So even though it's smaller, the material is heavier. So I need a stronger force to blow on it, but I need a weaker force to blow and move the envelope. Let's try some other materials. Look, so here I have a pencil. A pencil is made out of wood and lead, and it's quite light. So I think I won't need a very strong wind or a strong breath to make it move. Let's see. Oh, I was right. It blew way out with only a little bit of force. So the power of my breath is, is more than enough to move a pencil. It moved at a high speed right out of the camera because it's so light and only a weak force can make it move. Let's try one more object. This little rock, the cool drawing on it. Now the rock is pretty small, but we know Rocks are pretty heavy material. So let's see if I can make it move at all. All the other materials I can move, but let's see if I can make this move. I'm gonna use my strongest breath. Mm -mm, it's not happening. I'm not going to be able to move this rock with just the power of my breath alone because no matter how strong I blow, my breath is not strong as the wind to move it. Maybe if the wind, if I, if I was the wind, then I could make it move because I could be powerful enough. But because this rock is super heavy, my breath is not strong enough to make it move. It doesn't have enough force. Now, what we've learned from looking at all of our objects is that the way that wind moves, th that wind and our breath move things depends on how heavy the material is and how powerful the wind is. So say I blew on this eraser with just a very light breath, it won't move because the object is too heavy and my breath is too weak. But if I blow really hard, super strong, moves a little bit. So there we go. So now we know that when things, that the wind is strong and the object is light, then things will move. But if the object is heavy and the wind is very soft, very weak, then it will not move. So thanks you all for joining me today for this activity. I hope you had fun and I'll see you another time. Bye-bye.